Good morning. Hey, we're live. All right. Are we move this out of the way. Are we live and visible to the public? Because we only have one person watching. Yeah. Oh, two people. All right, go ahead. I'm going to move this, and we'll get back to it in just a second. We will be doing some painting on it. Well, last week, I, we got the, when are you going to start painting furniture on Wednesdays again? So I was like, all right, well, this is stuff that needs to get finished. So I'm going to finish painting it. So this is a made in Mexico chair. It's got one coat of mint chip on it. And I'm just coming back and putting a second coat and then I'm going to two tone it with white on the details. So I get, we get asked about that a lot. I'm not the best at it, but I'll let you watch me. And then we're going to paint white over the top of that teal and wet distress the color back through. And Zeb, you should probably be doing that because oh. it's got to dry. Okay. I'll get to comments in a minute. Morning, guys. How's everybody doing? We are working on cleaning out our garage and organizing our life before we go to Hawaii. So we've got a long list of stuff. Hey, Sally. The mint chip is not a super dark color, but it's really bright. And I haven't used it often enough, I don't think. So I'm, I'm bringing a mint chip back into the rotation. Do you guys ever do that where you... Love a color, love a color, love a color, and then don't use it for a while. And then you find it again. It's like your long lost blankie and you want to <laughs> just use it. I have never right. lost my blankie. What this is my Palm Pro one? for an inexpensive brush. This is one of my favorite flat surface brushes. These are just barely back in stock. I think they might say back order, but that's only because they won't be shipping to us until Friday. But if you order them, they'll ship out next week. And these have been out of stock on our website since the beginning of the summer, I think, because they're made by Zebra and Zebra, I don't know, they just weren't making them. They just didn't have them. So yeah. I know a lot of people have asked about the Palm Pros, so they're back in stock. So this is, <clears throat> the chair is mint chip and Jamie painted this off camera the other Farm day, Fresh. Farm Fresh. And I'll bring you in close. It's a little streaky. It's just one coat, but we didn't do any sanding. Just wiped it down and then painted. Okay, so I'm just taking my French round. This is the old one with the plastic handle, but um, they now come with a wood one. But the, I like to use this one to two-tone stuff. And I just come in and just paint it. And then when it's all done, I'm gonna wet distress it. And it really makes the details pop. And it's okay, like if I get a little bit where I don't want it, I can just come back with a mint chip or I can just sand it off. Doesn't it also gives perfect. you a fun layered look if you want to go with like a real chippy distress. Yeah. You can see that I'm not being super, like I've got white right there. I actually have a real fine artist brush that sometimes I use that for a touch up. I can get down into the cracks. So that's all I'm doing with this. It's really a simple way especially on detailed pieces to bring that look out. And she'll probably hit up here and continue that on up with all of these details here. And then on the legs, it's got these on the... the... <laughs> this is because I had like too much paint on there. So I literally <laughs> just took my finger and chunked that paint right off. Which is okay, because she's going to go white over the top. Yeah, it'll be fine. All right, let me show you this. This is one coat of the Farm Fresh, the DIY Farm Fresh. And we just brushed it on real quick. What did it take you? Five, 10 minutes to brush this? Just real About fast 10 coat? Minutes. About 10. Yeah. And you can see it's a little bit streaky. We're gonna go over this with white. This is just a base coat. And we're going to distress that Farm Fresh color back through wet distress. We'll just go real easy on the wet distress because we're not gonna seal it first. And it's very cured. That helps. A lot of times I'll seal stuff in between coats. But in this case, this is painted like a week ago. So, it, well, it'll be easier to do that. What is this? this is this like a weird, is this like a leaf set? It looks like- leaves. I don't know. It looks like armor on like a knee or something to me. <laughs> That's where my brain went. All right, I'm gonna start getting the white coat on this so we can get it dry and hopefully show you the two-tone before we run out of time and have to go pick up Jack. Jamie, your head's in the way. They can't see what you're doing. Sorry. I'm just painting. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> just bringing out detail here. Jamie was making fun of me earlier. She ordered me some new Tevas instead of water shoes for when we're in Hawaii. The water shoes we had last year were great, Where's but the they weren't awesome for hiking in the mud. 
they were real slick and didn't have any traction at all. And um, it's snowing outside, but I've got my Tevas on. I have socks. I'm that Tevas guy. and socks. It's really attractive. Tevas and socks. But I was like, you know what? I've never worn these ever. And I need to try them out and see if I like them before we end up in Hawaii and I'm traipsing around all the mountain passes and going to waterfalls and things. Whatever. You think they're cool. You just wanted to wear them. <laughs> I don't know that you're gonna catch me in these unless I'm trying to walk in a river. We're not quite the hippies that we think we are. What? You're totally stereotyping teasers. <sighs> That's kind of what they people wear them for. I think it's just people who don't want to have shoes on but but still need shoes. They're pretty comfy. Mine are cute though. Yours are like the old school ones. Mine are teal. <laughs> when I'm done painting this, I'll show you guys my new teasers. They're actually pretty comfortable. I'm not hating them. No, oh, they're way comfortable. I was like, oh dang, I'm about to be a hippie. You guys see me with dreadlocks, you'll know that the Tiva is stuck. I get a lot of questions from people about coverage. And the first coat always looks pretty crappy, but the second coat makes it look so much better. So always remember that. And are you doing more farm fresh on there? No, this or, is uh, mint chip. Mint I'm just painting the in-between parts. Oh, gotcha. The parts that aren't getting the white. Okay. And DIY paint is all natural clay base, but it's thick. So if you want a really smooth finish, you can sand it in between coats and it'll get like buttery smooth. But I like the texture, especially on a piece like this because it makes it look real old. Old world, is that even a? Wet distressing also really smooths it out. Yep, if you don't want to sand. Sometimes I just sand it when I'm sanding it to smooth it out. I sand the opposite direction of my brush strokes and that will flatten them out a little. If I want a really smooth finish, then I just spray it on. Oh, look, the sun's coming out, Zeph. Let nice. the sun come out. That means I won't have to uh, really worry about the driveway being icy. I know, we snowed last night. Not a ton, though. I, I went and got my hair cut this morning and the lady lives in my neighborhood and I didn't allow myself time to warm up the car so I was driving with my head out the window so I could see. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take a peek and see what people are saying and if anybody's asking any right. questions. You might wanna paint on the front because that's where we're gonna show them the wet distress. Oh, okay, I'll paint on the front real quick. There's a hole in this chair. A hole from the wood? Yeah. That's all right. Probably a bug at some point. Did you pull this drawer out? No. But you can. It's probably a good idea. Oh. I'm going to have to stay on the sides. It's kind of messy. There we go. Oh, you did move the drawer in. That's all right. <laughs> Sorry. I'll get it with the white. That's how I got it painted in 10 minutes. I wasn't exactly proficient at it. And I don't worry if I, like, this chair is going to be pretty distressed. I don't worry if I get 100% coverage because if you're going to take it off, I just like it to not look streaky. All right. Now for some hand painting. I used to make Zeb do all my hand painting. Can you put that closer to me, the white? Yep. Here, can you hit that corner there? Probably this is going to need two coats, this white, but we'll just do one so that way you guys can see. The thing about when I'm painting, hand painting, is I, when I'm two-toning, I wipe off a lot of the paint so that way it's not drippy. Because if you got too much paint, it gets all over the place. nice thing about this piece, a lot of times you'll get these and they'll just have like a MDF top that's been routered on the edge and it's solid wood. So we have two solid wood pieces here. Except for the, the is the inside wood too? Yeah. Is that MDF? Nope. Do you want to show wood. them this how they can check and see if something's wood or not? Oh wait, I fibbed the back. Of, it's only the front. I fibbed. Can you, can you take them underside? We get that question all the time. How do I know if it's solid wood? Okay. So let's show them. So right here, you can see 
I don't know, can you see that on camera? I've got, they, they used actual wood for the front piece here. And then on the back side and the bottom, they've got a veneer on the top. We painted that, not a big deal. But this is MDF that's been, it's got like a- uh, Pressure treated. Yeah, it's pressure treated, got a veneer over the top right here. So that if, I don't know if you see it from the bottom side, I guess. But so real wood, MDF, and then you can see up here. So if you're looking at furniture and you're in the thrift store and you want it to be like solid wood, yeah, you really need to go digging. Yeah, if it's like pre, if it's post eighties, you've got a real solid chance that most of it is MDF and just the front pieces like this here are solid wood. It's just because it's less expensive to manufacture and people say, well, it's really heavy. So I thought it was solid wood. It's really solid. MDF, MDF heavy. is heavier than wood most of the time. Yeah. Because it's a uh, fiber board and it's fibers that are pressed together. And real wood has more grain and it's lighter, not as condensed. And so real wood is less, less heavy. Sorry guys, you get the back of my head for a second. That's here. such a cute back of the head. Do you want to show them like the actual little <laughs> <wooden> shape there? <laughs> Zeb doesn't care. I don't care. I don't care either. Actually, I only wear the hat because you were like, your shiny head is distracting from, <laughs> from me in the videos. What? From you in the video? No, it's just, it's just distracting in general because sometimes it, the light reflects off of it, like my glasses, when I used to wear glasses. So it's better in the... All right. I'm liking this two-tone. All right, we'll bring you up close here in a sec so you can see the two-tone. I just almost done with the face of this here. All right. Okay, I am gonna take a break and look and see what people have been saying. No, you can do that. It's, it, let it, it'll dry and then we can wet distress it. All right. Hang on, I gotta scroll back for a sec here because we've missed everything. Everybody's saying hi. They're loving the mint color. Lori Jane, yes, that's okay. Thanks for the mention. raining in San Diego. Oh, I knew it was raining in San Diego because Debbie said that it was. Katie Lease, did I miss Jamie getting LASIK or contacts? Yep, she got LASIK. Yeah, I got them September, at the end of September, I went to Hoops Vision and got LASIK. I also got lashes recently, although I've picked a few of them out, I'm getting used to it. Lauren Ferris says she also is loving the skeleton key color. Oh, that is a total underused color. I need to use that again. I used it last spring. And I think it's been since then that I've used it. And I don't think I even used it on a video. It's like this bluish gray. It's really yummy. I need to turn a light on or something. Is it dark in here? I'm dark. Well, it was <laughs> dark when, and then it got brighter. So the sun's. Karen Thomas is catching us live from England. Hey, Karen. Top of the morning to you. I think it's late there. Oh, well, that's all I know how to say with an English accent. It Is that is. really? I don't even think that's an English <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> I mean, got? it's good. I'm so bad. You know, I'm so politically incorrect. I should know because I'm actually English. Like, that's like a majority of my heritage is from England. Let's see, Kimberly. We thought we were Irish, but we're not. <laughs> Kimberly Lukens asks, when you have painted furniture, do you ever put more than one color on furniture in a room or stay with one color? Oh, I have in my house, I have a cabinet that's like blue green over here. Like you can't see it, but it's behind the camera. And then I have white and yeah. And a blue clock. As long as they kind of go together. I, I have a lot of white furniture and then I have pops of color. In my bedroom, my furniture is all white. I have stained tops. But the, uh, the dresser is two-toned. The dressers are two-toned and so is the buffet. Yeah, the buffet has a different color underneath the white. Yeah. I like to do that a lot, little peekaboo color. I'm trying to think, the little boy's room, it's black and gray. So yeah, that's not all the same. Donna Singleton. Odelia's room has white and apothecary. Her bed's white and her nightstands are apothecary. So yeah, I think you can. All right, Donna Singleton. What is the best brush to get for beginners. It's just like um, awkward height I like height the Katie Pixie one and three quarters. If I could only have one. If I could only have three brushes, it would probably be the French round for detail work, spindles, and two-toning. 
the one and three quarters from Paint Pixie and either the Palm Pro or the Dusty because they're really good for flat surfaces when you're in a hurry. They get a lot of paint on there and smooth it out. So... And a um, wax brush because putting wax on by hand is for the birds. Jackie Lockhead asks, do you find live videos are easier to do than editing videos? Absolutely. Um, the thing about the live videos is they're kind of one and done though. After about a week, we don't get too many views I don't on know, them. We have, a 50, we have one with 50, 60,000 views yeah, on Yeah, but that's, that's, not, that's not normal. Like yeah. usually we'll get about 10,000 views on the live videos and then they're done. But the edited videos, I mean, those are the ones that are going to get the higher views over time, at least for us. And when we want to show a process start to finish, live videos take too long. People don't want to sit there and watch you for four live videos to finish one piece of furniture. So much better to have those ones. Um, I don't know why I painted the inside of this. They're telling me not to wear my socks in Hawaii. Yeah, I won't have socks on in Hawaii. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have socks on too. It's cold. Actually, I don't think I can lift my foot up that way. Ta-da! It's cold in here. Yeah, when I go to Hawaii, I wear dresses and a bathing suit. That's pretty much my attire the whole time I'm there. I'm almost got all my two-toning done. The other side, vintage. We can be close friends. You can tell people that. That's all right. <laughs> all right. I'm almost all the way done with my two-toning. I'll come back and do some touch-up, and then I can show you guys how I'm going to wet distress this chair. We cleaned our... Oh, I told them if they watched the video yesterday, we'd show them our closet. So we're going to take them on a little field trip to show oh, them Oh, we'll show you the closet. It's not quite reading. done yet, but the clothes are getting there. We've been doing our nightstands today, and so there's still some stuff on our bed because we've been doing that, organizing it. We've been watching a lot of Marie Kondo. We've been condoizing our life. Not in the st exact steps, she said, because I can only do a little bit at a time. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going back to painting. If you have questions, pop them in there, and I'll look at them in a minute. I'm just coming back through, and anywhere that's streaky, I'm touching it up with a mint chip. There we go. Don't you guys think that looks so much better too? you got to lean over farther. I can't don't, see you. Don't you guys think that looks, comment if you think it looks better two-toned or if you liked it one tone. I think, I actually don't like it at this stage. Once we distress it back, I'll be happier with it. Yeah. I'm not going to do the back of the chair because I will do that later when you guys are no longer live. But I'll finish getting this second coat of mint in all the other areas. I used to think there was like this huge mystery to two-toning stuff. And then... Sasha from Sweet Pickens, the milk paint that I sell, was like, you just paint it. And if you mess up, you just touch it up with a little artist brush or whatever. It's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be perfect. I guess I thought there was some mystery on how you kept the paint from getting where you didn't want it. Whoops, I flung a little paint. <laughs> Luckily, just... the DIY wipes off pretty easy with water if it's not sealed. Which is good because I have some on my non-paint shirt. We're, we're not in camera. Sorry, <laughs> I'm struggling guys. with the camera trying to get the chair and the coffee table I'm in the shot. Done. I'm about ready to get back in camera. All right. We, we got rid of a lot of our paint clothes yesterday. We had paint clothes. Oh my days. goodness. We had so many. But basically, all of the clothes had some paint on them. And there's a lot of things that I just was like, yeah, I'm never going to wear this again. <laughs> well, I think it stems from when we were first married. We were kind of... Uh, you know, we were broke, so we kept everything. And now that we're not as broke, we're like, okay. Or, and we also realize you save more money when you can find your stuff. We rebuy stuff because we can't find it. Yeah, that's true. Or I don't realize that I have 42 pairs of jeans because I haven't actually had them all clean and in their same spots in time. Well, I a lot of them were hiding down underneath my clothes on the bottom rack of the, the bottom hangers. Well, your clothes are huge. Yep. They're a lot bigger than mine. They take up a lot of room, but it's good because I have a lot less. <laughs> I, have like, I have like eight or nine t-shirts and then some work t-shirts and like four pairs of pants and some shorts and I'm done. All right. That's good. I'm going to go get a, I'm going to wash that paint. You want to look at comments and yeah, see if I anyone's I asking any questions? See if we have any more questions. This, the, the painting of this is not the, uh, the super interesting part. I mean, I'm kind of just putting white on this. 
But once we distress it and the colors come back, it'll be a All lot right. more fun. Comments. People like wax, love the two-tone. Hey, I'm in Hawaii right now, and it's cold. I got two pairs of socks on. <laughs> well, don't tell me it's cold in Hawaii. Wait, I saw the temperatures. I've been watching the temperatures, and it's where we're going. It's been, I mean, it, feels, it seems like it'd be cool for Hawaii. It's been getting like 50 at night. 50 at night would probably feel like a summer day right now. Our high is going to be, I think, 30 today. It's been getting in the low teens at night. <laughs> Tammy says she has tons of paint clothes. Lisa says, good idea. Somebody says, oh, hold on. Lisa, somebody had an idea for a tutorial and somehow I missed it. Um, Dina, Dina, Dina Harris has 63 pairs of black pants. 63 pairs. I only say black leggings because I'm over the... Over the colored leggings. I'm over the colored leggings. All right, I'm going to wet this dress. Let's see if it's dry yet. Oh, let me... Yeah, it's, it's dry enough. I can wet this dress. I'll bring the camera close so they can see. Let me see. get water. Somebody asked uh, why we would use wax sealer instead of liquid sealer. You want to talk about that? So wax sealer is... So let's say this piece was kind of gross when we got it. We had to do a lot of cleaning, a lot of sanding, things like that. I would probably have shellacked that first. But wax sealer is going to be less likely to bleed through on whites. It doesn't pull the paint, the stains up through the paint as it dries. And it also will give you a nice flat finish. It's really great for small items that you just want to do real quick. Or if you've got a ton of detail on something, it's a lot easier to wax. You can just take your wax brush and rub it all around and then buff it off. Whereas with sealer, you kind of got to be careful, watch for drips, things like that. Um, you don't get brush strokes with wax. Yeah. So if something's white and I know it's going to bleed through, I wax it. If it's going to be heavy use, sometimes I will use a liquid sealer. Yep. The or... liquid sealers are much more durable than the wax. The wax can, you can put it on and buff it to a pretty good shine. But if it's going to be like a tabletop or like an end table where you're going to be setting water or drinks or something all the time, then I would use a liquid sealer. So I just have a lint-free rag and water. Warm water is best, but I did wait for it to get warm. All right, I'm gonna bring it in close. Just taking off paint. And if you take off too much, you can always just put it back on there. This chair was pretty uh, raw wood. It didn't have a lot of sealer on it. So if any, I don't need the paint any. sticks pretty good. You wanna show, so down here is just where I'm bringing the, the mint back through along the edges. The sun's going to come out and cooperate. This is why it doesn't have to be perfectly painted along the edges because I usually wet distress along them anyways. Sometimes I'll take the dry part of my towel and pull it off because it'll get kind of muddy. But there you go. That's all there is to wet distressing. Not every paint will wet distress. If you're using latex, it's not gonna do this. It has to be a water soluble paint. So DIY, Fairy Chalk Mother, Sweet Pickens, until they're sealed, they're water soluble, which means you can take water and take the paint back off. And actually, if you let this sit for 30 days, you'd be hard pressed to get it off because this dries, it, the clay will cure. Yeah, the DIY paint cures Even if you don't seal hard. it the clay will clear over, cure over 30 days. So don't, if you're gonna do some wet distressing, don't let it now, harden too much. Disclaimer on that, don't think that because your paint's been sitting for 30 days, you don't if you go in it. like- It'll still add oil and grease and- Yeah, it's, it's still porous. So if you're gonna still be using it for like needing to set things on or, or use in a kitchen or close to, or chairs or something like that, that are gonna be touched a lot, like oils from people's hands and things will still go through the paint and you'll start to see stuff. So it's still a good idea to seal if it's going to be like a heavy use kind of item. Well, you can show them this cabinet over here. I never seal it. Oh, yeah. So, so this is our big cabinet. This is um, Jamie's favorite mix of Sweetie Jane and Pantry Door in Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. And it was pretty dried out, almost basically like raw wood. We just painted over it and this is what flaked off and chipped off and we it's not sealed or anything like that and it's holding up you can kind of see where we open it it's got a little more wear but that just adds to the character 
Um, and it's probably, it's, I noticed it's got a couple extra colors here, probably from painting in front of it, some paint fling, but you know, it, uh, it's got a lot of fun character, a lot of interesting things on it going on and it's okay. And right, so you can see that these. the green pulls back through. So I always tell people to seal in between layers, but this, because the green on the bottom had cured a few days, you don't really have to. It's just good practice if you're really picky. Yeah, if you so if you wanted to, let's say you wanted just the green to come through and you didn't Not necessarily want to get the wood tone, if you sealed the green, then did the white over, you could wipe the white off and then you just get the green coming back through. Exactly. That, you said it much better than I was saying it. And I might go ahead when I'm all done and lightly sand this with an actual sander. But it's nice in the winter time to wet distress because then you don't have to worry about dust getting in the house. Well, I've got, look at my paint job over here. <laughs> you're, you're I, 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 I've been you randomly reading comments and, and things and, and holding the camera so you guys can see what Jamie's doing. <laughs> <laughs> and my job is suffering. Honestly, I'm not super great at painting with a brush. That's really Jamie's. You're much better. That's Jamie's uh, specialty. Well, the truth is, probably after we show you, then we'll take it outside and spray it because it's faster. Well, I thought we were going to wet distress this some. Um... Yeah, but we're not going to wet distress the whole thing. This chair, I like spraying a lot of things, especially if I can keep the paint in the sprayer, but like this is mint, so it would have been a pain in the butt to load up the sprayer for Ann chair. But we yeah, we don't usually light. keep mint. We do have a colored sprayer that has black in it currently. I, I leave, so a lot of people ask this. Here, I'll bring you over here so I can talk to you. Um, a lot of people ask about the spraying. Um, we keep multiple hoppers meaning, or multiple guns set up and I don't clean them out in between very often if I, unless I'm changing a color out. Like if I'm doing the white swan, I just leave white swan in a gun and that's all that's ever going in that gun. About once a month we... Yeah, I'll clean it. I'll give it like a decent scrub down about once a month, but I'll run probably four or five quarts through there before I even bother cleaning it out. Not best practice, disclaimer. <laughs> But the reason I do that is it saves a ton of time on cleaning your gun and things like that. Like if you have multiple guns, you'll save more in time than having, cause I have a black set up too. So we've been doing lots of chalkboards and stuff like that. And so the black, I just- We have one for I'll, sealer. Yep, and then one for sealer too. But the black, I'll just leave that in there. And then if I need to switch to a blue, I don't have to do like a crazy scrub on it because I went from black to blue instead of black to white or white to black or whatever. Um, you don't have to clean it out nearly as well and you're not going to get muddy colors. And it's not good if you have an expensive sprayer to leave it in there. But honestly, the Harbor Freight ones are so inexpensive that we wind up just buying new ones. That's just the way it is. It's practicality. It's called, we don't have time and we just got to get it done in a hurry a lot of times. It's not worth the water. We live in a desert, so, you know. Yeah. We're going to show them this. It's snowy outside, but this is the, once we get past April, we won't get any more moisture on the ground until like September. <laughs> All right, we can show them this chair here in a minute. Maybe a couple random storms, but not much. Okay. All right, I'm gonna paint this real fast and then I'll go check comments again and see what you guys are saying. Oh, not, not a lot of people know this. Um, in our, right before our uh, live uh, member stream yesterday for our YouTube channel members, Jack fell and hit his face pretty hard and almost, and he bit his lip really bad right before we went live and we ended up not taking him anywhere it's scabbing up great looks good swellings down and he's going to be okay in case you're wondering yeah we have a lot of people asking us how jack was doing all right bear with us we'll change the camera angle 
and give you some close-ups of this. Now, mind you, this is a quick job. I'm going to come back and probably touch things up and buff them, but I know you don't want to sit here for 42 hours while I finish the chair. All right, Zeb, show him the chair. Okay. Hang on. I need like... You're like 30 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> this is why we don't paint lives, I feel like. It takes a long time to paint, and it's a lot of just putting color on in between stuff. It's all right. Okay, so here is the chair. This is what it's looking like. You may need to hit a little more there. I feel like I need to get more of that. More of the white, Wood huh? coming through up here. I like up there. Up there is good. So this is the look we're going for all the way. Once that's sealed up, are you going to wax? Um, or spray? I think I might just have you spray this one because I'm... Yeah, so it, I think if we spray it, it'll be all right. Wax would be okay. However, some, a lot of times people like to use these as porch chairs. And even though it's not outdoor sealer technically, it will yeah. hold up better than a wax. Yeah, for sure. So there's, there's the close-ups of the flowers. You need to do this middle flower more, unless you're not going for matching. There we go. No, the, the middle ones. Oh, yeah. They need more. They're not looking chunky. nearly as distressed as the rest it's of it. It's like a workout and a job all the same time. <laughs> there. All right. That. I'm going to go look at comments again real quick, okay, and then, we'll show them then we can kind of show them the what the blue, blue looks like coming through on this. Oh, wait, I missed the spot here. Yeah, you hold on. So it's like. I know, I've been missing spots all over as I've tried to run the camera and. <laughs> It'll be all right. The what? reason why I wanted to do this two tone with the wood coming through, it just reminds me, and the mint's kind of brighter. It reminds me of a chair like sitting on the porch of like an old Mexican casita. And I kind of want to pay homage to where this chair would have originally came from. Les asks how many weeks till Hawaii. We're down to like a week and a half. Week and a half. We're, we're leaving on the 28th. All right. Still have to paint the back of the chair. The front is done. I think that turned out pretty golden. Sally says she loved the blush velvet pillows on the bed from yesterday's video. Ooh, I love those pillows too. They're really soft. So Sherry Robinette, I'm, I'm guessing you're asking about spraying. It doesn't clog in between. So I cheat yeah. a little bit. I have a little tiny wire brush. I'll go run out here in a sec and I'll show you. And I just brush the edge of the nozzle where the paint comes out and it gets rid of all the crusties. And I'll show you how to do that. I don't think I've ever shown that on a video, but it's, it's my cheap, quick method of semi-cleaning the gun and still getting good continuous flow even without cleaning. All right, because I feel like this should probably just be sprayed to finish finish this one. I'm just going to show you real quickly, though, how you can wet distress and bring that blue back. Now, here's the deal. If we would have sealed it, we would get just the blue. Let me bring you in closer. But because we didn't seal it, we're also getting some of the wood. Oops, sorry. Too close, too close. So you can see how the blue's kind of coming through along the edges and then you get the natural wood tone. That's what happens if you just paint it, paint over the top, then wet distress. So I've kind of over, went over this, but if you did not like the base coat of it, then you would go ahead and you would paint it, seal it, let it dry overnight, then put the white on. I'll kind of show you guys how I'm gonna do these edges here. And this is something when I'm doing um, furniture that I keep in mind when I'm wet distressing especially. I'm gonna go heavier along the edges. Now, please bear with me that this still needs a second coat, but I just wanna show you guys. Anywhere there's like details where it would naturally maybe wear, like right here, I'm gonna give it a little spot there. And then I'm gonna go across this line here along these edges. I like to kind of hit, you know, the top part where it would wear but I'm not gonna do like lots of splotches because that's gonna make it look like a cheetah and it doesn't have natural wear. So there you have it. We'll show you the finished chair and sofa table on community later today. And I have a also, questions too. oh yeah, we're gonna answer questions. 
um, here in a minute and on Instagram and Facebook we'll have them all over there but stay tuned because we're gonna show you our closet because if you watched yesterday's video I said I would and Zeb's gonna show you his spray gun I'm gonna run out and grab the spray gun real fast and how I clean it how you clean it Zeb's gone he is not a super neat brusher don't tell myself that but it's true all right, let's go see comments. Oh, uh, Cindy Foster was talking about adding, I think it was her, she was talking about adding uh, molds to a plane chair to make it more detailed. Yeah, that would be fun. You can totally do that too, and that's a really quick, easy way to add a lot of character. There were a couple other questions. Someone asked, yeah, you don't want to leave milk paint in your sprayer. I don't use these with, with milk paint. I use the critter sprayer, but still you don't want to leave the milk paint in there because it will gel and harden up. But, um, and then someone else asked me another question, but so I've got this little wire brush and you can pick these up down at the hardware store. You can actually get them at Harbor Freight. They're like a buck for a two pack. And what I do is I just, I pull the gun open at an angle so it doesn't drip paint out. And then I'm just going to take this brush and right here at the nozzle, I'm gonna clean up where the air and the paint comes out. And that keeps it nice and clean, keeps the buildup off and allows me, oh, that's gonna need some serious, oh, paint's coming out. I'm like, why is that not getting silver? Got paint coming out. So I leave paint in there so they don't dry out. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't wash them and you're out of paint, fill it with water. Yeah. Store them with water until you're ready to clean it because if you store them, when you ran through all the paint and you don't clean them right away, then that will make it impossible to clean. So either store them with paint in them, store them upright, or store them with water in them. And about once a month, you're going to have to take it apart and clean everything out. Um, I also have this little pick, and I use this to clean up the air vent at the top. And I'm just gonna stab it there in case, because sometimes paint will get up in there and gunk it. And this, I mean, that's good to go. Like I could go spray a whole hutch right now, no big deal, it just spray. Um, oh, you, you just tell me clean out that too. Yep, yeah, this is probably. There's like a little hole. Yeah, I showed them that oh. just now. <laughs> this is probably four months old, and I've never I've had it apart maybe three times, like all the way apart to clean it. So. All right, let's fill trip to our bedroom. Show them our closet. Wait, there was one more question. Check the questions. I, other you questions. probably moved it. Sorry. There was one other question that I wanted to answer. Um, Robbie McClure, hey, I was wondering, can you use polyacrylic inside or does it smell strong? It does have a little bit of a smell. You should not use it in a But yeah, area. I would do it, I would do it outside and especially spray. You don't want to spray it in the house. And then one other question, um, someone asked what you're going to seal these with. I think we addressed that. Oh, um, what do we, when we're using liquid sealers, we usually uh, use Sweet Pickens Top Coat if we're spraying or a DIY Big Top when we're brushing. You can spray DIY Big Top, but we can, as wholesalers, can buy the top coat in a bigger quantity just for our personal use, so that's convenient. And the Big Top levels out better, I think, than the top coat, yeah. I feel like. So if I'm going to be brushing it on with a big foam brush, I use DIY Big Top. And those are both all natural, no VOC, so you can brush them inside. So Julie West asks, um, what video of yours do you suggest for chalk painting cabinets? I want to do my bathroom ones in a lighter bright color and add hardware. So we have an entire playlist on refinishing our kitchen. If you see our earlier videos, yeah, if you see our earlier videos, these were like the yellow oak. We have an entire playlist on start to finish and there's just a dedicated edited video because some of those videos are live on the start to finish process. and. We also have a cabinet or a bathroom makeover playlist where we painted our bathroom cabinets. So maybe that'll help. Bathroom you for the cabinets bathroom are fun because they're not very big. Yep. So they don't right. take very long. Especially if they're not white. If they're not white, man, you're golden. White, these white kitchen cabinets were a lot of work. <laughs> but they've held up really, really well with minimal, like I would say in another year, we might have to touch up a little bit around the edges, but they've held up well considering we have five kids and nobody's, nobody's soft. All right, we are going on a field trip. field trip. Hopefully the rest of the house looks decent. Well, there's bags everywhere from cleaning stuff. There's the office. People have been asking us about the office. It's, it's, still, it's messy. It's in medium or disarray. Well, there's fabric because Eliza needed fabric this morning. This is this is where all your... Jack's. Jack's. This is what happens when Jack gets in the office. Jack was in here this morning. 
He's got, we got a 3D printer for Christmas for the kids, and he's got all his little guys up on his tower of paints. Yeah, I gotta ship after we're done, and so I'm gonna have to take apart his tower. <laughs> all right, so these are the two trash bags. One is like old paint clothes that we're not gonna donate, we're just gonna get rid of those. And then the, oh that no, that's, garbage. this is the garbage one. Don't tell Jock, that's his artwork there. <laughs> Um, the bed is, you should explain, the bed's messy because Zeb's cleaning out his So drawers. I've been going through my drawers this morning that were in the side because we said we would do it. So, you know, we got to, when we, we like uh, got to be accountable, right? So I have, that's, all of this is just from my top drawer in my nightstand over there. But we put this heavy denim blanket down on and just dumped. So that's what's going on Let's right there. My nightstand is clean. This is Jamie's. She's got her emergency candy next to the bed. In case I want to draw... Candy, magnesium, melatonin, because I'm an old lady, if my back hurts, and for my cracked, dry feet. <laughs> all right, here's the closet that it's we've been telling. A, so this is, stuff. this is all winter clothes up here. I have to still get those up skit. Those are for when I go sledding or snowboarding or whatever with the kids. But look, ta-da, paint shirts. Ta-da! And I'm, you know, you guys know me. I'm kind of obsessed. This is every pair of pajama pants that I own. So I'm pretty proud of that. And then I had to separate my jeans. These are uh, non-holy jeans for when it's cold outside. I call them my winter jeans. And then I folded my holy jeans with the holy side up first so I could see because it's always frustrating when I'm going through trying to find jeans. I have to open them up. All right, these have holes. These don't. That's Zeb stuff up there. Disclaimer. And we, there's my wedding dress. We haven't we're, quite we haven't gotten got to, to the top. It. But everything else is pretty organized. Before you could not even see the floor. And we have a floor. And so yeah. So if you're wondering why we're even showing you this, um, we basically challenged ourselves to finish this before so in yesterday's video. So go watch yesterday's video. We redid the room a bit. Oh, and then shoe organizing beanies. The like one necklace I own is right there. I think I own two. There's one right here under this shoe. <laughs> That's it. I don't own any necklaces. And these are my new Tevas for Hawaii. Do, 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 do. All right, guys. I think we're going to end it there. All right. Go have... to... I have to say this. Okay, otherwise, go. they're going to forget. Go to jamierayvintage.com if you want to use the colors. We have mint chip, white swan, and the base of the sofa table was farm fresh. We've got our paint brushes on there. I just say that because people ask every time, where do we buy the paint? So I just want to make sure they know. All right. And if you're not a uh, channel member, maybe uh, maybe consider it. You know, we have yeah. a lot of fun. We're doing a lot of fun things. Um, you get two extra videos a month and some printables. Well, yesterday we went live and we made sure to like go over details of how to build the brand. Next month we're going to be talking about social media in our live video for members only. Just things that we don't cover on our normal channel. Yeah. Um, where is our store located? Somebody just asked. We have one on Main Street here in Lehigh, 1245 Main Street. And 127 Main Avenue, we sell our paint in Fallbrook, California. Or you can just pick it all up at jamierayvintage.com.